discussing about the, some other aspects of consciousness related to the Theravada tradition. We will start with the, I think a new handout was given, uh, starting from page number 14. Right? This is connected to the previous uh, handout. To the previous handout. So here we will be, in the first lecture, we will be discussing about a uh, few classifications, like classification based on jati, is type and the classification based on the realm. It's very important to know because the, these classifications will be related to the other lectures that we are going to have in the new course. So uh, if you go to paragraph number 4, number 4.12, so it says about, uh, you can call it Jati Beda. Jati Beda means, Beda here means the classification, categorization, based on jati. Jati means types, types of consciousness. So according to the doctrine, we have four types of consciousness. It's written in the uh, below paragraphs, starting from 4.13, kusala, akusala, vipaka, and kiriya. Kusala, akusala, vipaka, and kiriya. So four number 4.12 says that four types of consciousness can be observed within the doctrine of the Theravadins. And also reasons behind this distribution of consciousness can also be fetched from the doctrinal information. They are the latent defilements, one reason, according to their tradition, latent defilement, past karma, and the function of a chitta in a mind process. These are the three reasons why we classify consciousness based on types. For each classification, there is a, a, behind, a philosophy behind it. So that is the most important thing that we have to understand. So when we classify the chitta based on jati, we can translate it as thai, thai of chitta. We can, uh, uh, the main classification, the main criterion is these three points. The latent defilements, latent defilements we already discussed in the first lecture about the paramatta jatikas, that the uneradicated kilesas. And then past kamma, past kamma is mainly related to the Third type of third third type of consciousness, the vipaka, and then the functions. So in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about the classification of consciousness based on their functioning, based on their functioning. So these are the three uh, reasons why the consciousness is divided into three four groups. Into four groups. So first, we'll start about kusala and akusala. Kusala and akusala means. Now, when consciousness normally arises, we'll be uh, having a, uh, not a long explanation about this in these lectures. Uh, normally, consciousness arises in sequences. But in these, like, groups of, we can call it packets, like, consciousness arises in uh, certain pat patterns, then it's, it's, we can call it different sequence, uh, different uh, groups of consciousness. Groups of means they have arise one after another, but they have certain, uh, we can call it like packets. So this is how the consciousness works. So we can, if we go it next to it, so there is a uh, unique, there are unique characteristics for these types of uh, uh, series of consciousness. We call it mental processes. In Pali we call it Chitta Viti. It's not just a, it's not just functioning continuously. 
it has breaks in between in between so in these processes in most of the processes in a certain uh, uh, stage of the process within the process there are some consciousness which have an excessive force excessive force at the same time high level of cognition I'll be taking the next lecture to discuss about these types of consciousness we call them Javana Javana Chittas it will be uh, discussed in the next lecture today so these consciousness have an excessive effort we can call it, and also an excessive force so when I say effort it is like bit intentional intentional doesn't contradict with the doctrine of self here intentional means there is a certain kind of a urge to do certain things so intentional attribute is there a forceful attribute is there and also clarity in the cognition is there so when the consciousness we normally say it's cognizing an object but there are levels of this cognition certain certain consciousness sees the object very clearly but for certain consciousness they don't see the object clearly as some other consciousness does but in the previous lecture we also mentioned about the phenomenon of effectiveness phenomenon of effectiveness means every consciousness has a certain basic level of cognition it means there are there is a level that all the consciousness should come into it's a it's a certain phenomenon governing according to the Buddhist tradition so the next like in the next week I'll be talking about this effectiveness of the phenomenon it has two aspects of this effectiveness how the consciousness work in a person's uh, person's life so here what we are going to focus is these types of chittas when these types of chittas happens in a mind process now this is the point so these uh, sentences processes within these sentence uh, 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 consciousness processes consciousness processes there are certain chittas with excessive force and with a high level of cognition when these chittas arise in a mind stream in which the latent defilements are not uprooted I'll repeat the phrase again in a when these consciousness powerful consciousness arise in a mental stream where the latent defilements are not uprooted it means non arahants beings who have not completely purified themselves in the mental sense when these conscious like they get a potency to give yield results in the future so these types of consciousness when they arise in the mind stream where the latent craving is not uprooted we call them karma Sanskrit we call them Kama, Karma. In Pali we call it kam, Kama. Kama means certain mentalities which have the ability to give results in future. So according to the Theravadis, what is the basic reason for these chittas to become karma? That is the later undefined, unremoved latent tendencies, mainly the craving. I'll be take, talking because I have dedicated eight lectures for karma. I'll be explaining them in detail. What is the relation of tanha with this karma? What is the relation of uh, latent craving with this karma? So I'm not taking time. I just want to say when we say karma, it is the main reasoning for the karma to happen according to the literature is that these chittas has to be with a forceful attribute at the same time should arise in a mind stream where in which the latent craving is not uprooted that's the that's the main idea so then there are two types of karma <coughs> when these now when these forceful chittas arise in a, a mind stream where the latent craving is not, not uprooted sometimes these chittas get associated or associate certain beautiful mentalities beautiful mentalities means mental states which brings us bliss which brings us happiness at the sometimes these forceful chittas are associated with undefiled mentalities which torment our mind so how to decide these beautiful and defiled realities is that is through experience for example if we get anger if we get attached to something this will surely cause lots of troubles to our lives so such kind of mentalities Buddha defined as akusala that's defiled natures like mentalities such as compassion 
helping others, by, by which we help others, loving kindness, so the pleasant feeling towards, uh, uh, not in the, in the sense of attachment, by, but supporting others, or well concentrated mind. So these types of mentalities always brings comfort to our life, to our body, to our mind. So that we become healthy people in mentally and physically. So these types of mentalities which bring pleasant bliss. Are so when the chitta, these powerful chittas associate these pleasant mentalities, that chittas are called kusala chittas. So they we call them kusala. If these powerful chittas are associated with defiled mentalities, at that time we call those chittas akusala. So this is the uh, main criteria to decide. So I, if I repeat this explanation, what I just said, so uh, consciousness normally arises in uh, series, in series, uh, in processes. Within these processes, there are certain chittas that have excessive power, excessive force, and higher ability of cognition. And these chittas, when they arise in a uh, mind stream where defilements are not uprooted, we call it karma. So those karma chittas, if they are associated with defiled mentalities, we call it akusala. If they are associated with present mentalities, we call it kusala. So that is the main two types of consciousness, which I have written in 4.13 and 4.14. I have given the explanations. Then we come to the vipaka. Vipaka means when this kusala and akusala has been done, we also mentioned they get a certain potency, they get a certain attribute of giving results in the future. So these attributes, we call it vipachana sabhavatai, the ability to give results. So then because of, as a result of these kusala and akusala, at a later stage, at a later stage, later means after some time, they bring certain mentalities. We call these mentalities vipaka. We call them mentality vipaka. Vipaka are also certain mentalities which arise within our mind. So when we say the results of Kama, this is very diverse. So that's why I have I'm doing eight lectures based on this Kama. So just the one aspect is these Kama, Kusala and Akusalas bring results. Results means here what I'm talking is another type of mentalities. So these mentalities begot by Kusala are pleasant, which are begot by Akusala are unpleasant. So the main definition for vipaka is they are produced by past kammas. Whether they are kusala or akusala, they all fall into the group of vipaka. Right? That is the next point. Then these vipaka. So I mentioned that this kusala and akusala kammas have an excessive power, forceful nature. But these vipakas doesn't have that forceful attribute or intentional attribute. The reason is they are produced by a past force. They are produced by a different force. Force of the Kama is the most prominent in their case. Therefore, these Vipaka Chittas are not like these Javana, the forceful Chittas. They have a very uh, less forceful nature. They do have a force, but less forceful nature. So because of that, they are also serene. We normally call them serene. So normally when we sleep, during our sleep, without dreams, our mind comes into a state of a vipaka. Vipaka of the kama which gave our rebirth according to the tradition. So that is why the mind at that level, mind is in a calm state. And also the body also gets affected by this. So it's different from uh, the, while we are awake. So this vipaka they are in a very calm state and uh, uh, because the reason is they don't have this forceful attribute. But while we are dreaming, we are not in a vipaka state. Our mind comes into a uh, forceful state. So then there are two levels of forceful states like javana chittas. There are two levels while we are dreaming and while we are awake. They are very distinct. For example, if I talk about the Buddhist vinaya for bhikkhus, the acts we do in the dream are not considered either or if even we do a wrong act it is not considered as fault it's not fault means it's not considered as a breaching of an offense so because buddha says it is at that level you are un, you are, you are, you, it's un, uncontrollable your, your emotions or feelings are not in your control but still he says there is a fault in it 
because if you control your mind before the sleep if you control if you be mindful before the sleep he clearly mentions you will not even do a fault in the dream he uh, he accepts that this is a fault because in the sense of the mind because there's no self it's just the mind and matter working so even as a dream if a akusala unwholesome mindset arises this is something to be blamed but at the, at the in, when it comes to the discipline of the bhikkhus he is not in a position to punish or give give a punishment for such an act so therefore these forceful uh, chittas have two layers like while we are in the dream and while we are awake but the vipaka is different from that even so vipaka is a level it's not even in the level of a dream it's lower than that and then there's another type of vipaka while we are awake well, the main type of vipaka experience we experience while we are in the sleep then another type of vipaka is while we are awake also we get certain types of vipaka chittas i'll be discussing this in the lectures for the kama so the main thing is vipaka is something which is produced by a past kusala or akusala that is the reason and the point uh, and the char- their characteristic is they have a less forceful attribute and because of that they appear serene to the mind serene means because of their uh, it's something that is a uh, 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 quality that it gets because of its less forceful quality then we come to the kriya kriya means functional kriya functional means uh, also we should know all the chitta whatever chitta appears it has a certain function there is no chitta without a function then there are two types uh, kriya is another uh, chitta it it also has a forceful attribute like these powerful chittas kriya chitta also have forceful attributes they are not begot by the past kamma when something is begot by past kamma the force is at, given to the kamma the cause so in these powerful chittas and the kriya chittas what we are talking have the force at that moment because causes are given before that but there is a forceful attribute the intention attribute at that moment so uh, uh, we can say the control the con- uh, the we can restrain or not restrain at that level at that level because there's an intentional attribute in such chittas so in the kriya chittas we have two types of kriya chittas first type of kriya chitta a chitta is when we say that these forceful chittas they become kusala or akusala but there is a very basic necessity what is the necessity only if they arise in the mind stream in which the latent defilements are not uprooted then these chittas become kusala or akusala now what happen if these same chittas forceful chittas if they arise in a mind stream where latent defilements are uprooted at that time they neither become kusala no become akusala we designate them as kriya this is the first type of kriya kriya means i'll repeat again these forceful chittas when they appear in a mind stream in which the latent defilements are not destroyed we call them either kusala or akusala based on their association with good and bad mentalities now if these forceful chittas appear in a mind stream where the latent defilements are uprooted so what happens because they don't get the support of this latent craving to live so they don't get the potency to give results in future so those chittas are categorized or designated as kriya so this is the first type of kriya we normally call the arahants the purified beings their actions will not bear results in future so these chittas are called kriya then the second type of kriya means certain chittas now also we mentioned that chitta works in processes within this process these are the forceful chittas so now if you uh, if uh, i can also mention these forceful chittas are threefold they can be kusala they can be akusala if they arise in a mind stream where latent defilements is not removed if they arise in a mental dif- uh, mind stream where latent defilements removed we call it kriya so within these processes uh, in certain level certain positions for example in certain positions we have uh, related necessary functions it means now i we mentioned that our mind stream is in a vipaka state basically so the, from this vipaka state 
mind just suddenly cannot come into a very forceful level. It has to come gradually, step by step. So that is why the doctrine says it's always non-self. It's out of the control. It's just following a natural process. Even the mind has an intentional attribute where we can restrain and not restrain based on our decision. But still, it is, it is working to a certain natural phenomenon. So in this natural phenomenon, suddenly we are in a vipaka state, the mind just cannot come into a very higher, higher powerful state. It has to come with certain steps. So in this process of coming into this forceful level, there are certain necessity uh, requirements in this process. So in this, in this process, there are two chittas which are not powerful as these chittas but still have a certain attribute of forceful nature, intentional nature. But they are lesser than the Javana Chittas. So these two Chittas are called Mano Dwara Vajana and Pancha Dwara Vajana. If you go to the paragraph number 4.16, 4.16, from the down, from the down line, the up to third, three lines up to the down, down, up to the bottom line, from the bottom line, then two Chittas called Pancha Dwara Vajana and Mano Dwara Vajana, which also have the effortful attribute, but lesser than that of impulsive consciousness. Impulsive consciousness means the powerful Chittas becomes uh, become, actually it's become, Kiriya de depending upon their function and the time in which they perform the function. So it means, time with they perform the function means the Tana. Tana is equal to time. Function is Kicha, Tana is time. Because in the mind process, Tana is equal to time, the where it appears, one after another. Normally Pali Tana means the place, but when we talk it in the mind process, it equals to time. Time means after vichitta, the, uh, the particular functioning is happening. So in these places, in these times, uh, these Mapanchadwara Vajana and Manodwara Vajana happen, they are also not producing results in future and also not a production of the past, past life. The thing is, why we categorize these chittas separately? Because the Kiriya chittas, the functional chittas of this level only can happen to Arahants. Because if with these chittas even arise in a mind stream where the latent defilement is not removed, they become either kusala or kusala. But if they arise in a mind stream where the defilements are removed, we call them kiriya. So these two chittas, two means here actually I go three, but they are equal. These two chittas, these positions are equal. Just before the forceful chittas, these two chittas are identical, and this chitta is quite different. So these two chittas. Right? To, uh, even though there are three, there are two in number. These two chittas, e even the, in my streams of beings who are not completely pure like us, our my, uh, forceful chittas either become kusala or kusala. But within the process, these chittas in our mind stream also become kiriya. So therefore, these two chittas, Panchadwara Vajana and Manodwara Vajana, are not exclusive to Arahants, not exclusive to the beings who have removed the defilements. That's why we categorize them separately. Right? Categorize them separately. So these are the points. So uh, I think it's clear. The criterion to decide the type of a chitta is the later defilements is a very basic reason. Then the uh, Kamma is a reason for the Vipaka chittas, resultant consciousness, and then the function of a chitta in a certain mind process, the way it appears. That is, these are the reasons why we have four types of chittas, right? Jati Bhe. Then we come to page number 15. Conditions for unique to conditions unique to various types of chittas. In the previous lecture, we discussed about conditions which are common to all types of chittas, if you remember. We mentioned about the previous support given by the previous chitta, the force, the cognition, force in the cognition, force in the act of cognition. Then we discussed about the support given by certain mentalities. Also, we discussed the uh, support given by the base. Also, we discussed about the support given by an object. These are the four basic uh, conditions that are required for whatever chitta for arising, except the base in the Chatuvokara realm. So now we are talking now we, because we divided the chitta into four groups based on certain criteria. Now, what are the requirements for these specific types of chittas? Now we have four types of chittas: kusala, akusala, vipaka, kiriya. 
so other than the basic uh, basic uh, conditions for all types of chittas these specific types of chittas have specific some unique conditions so that is the list given here so it's easy to understand for example when we want to have wholesome chittas good chittas with uh, wholesome ideas so they are supported mostly by the associating of good friends and also the making effort or involving in good acts that we make a determination I will do such such things these kinds of involvements are necessary for all the wholesome acts then they are given with the references listening to the correct doctrine as mentioned by the Buddha because when you listen to a good uh, sermons that encourage you to do good things we get motivated and we start to do such things that is important then uh, Living in regions conducive to wholesome acts that is also very useful. Then previous arisen wholesome consciousness which support the latter consciousness because if we have done wholesome deeds in the past, this becomes a habit for us to repeat them. That is a very useful kind of a contribution. So when we are used to give dana, when we see a, and then we see a person with suffering, with uh, difficulties, we automatically get an uh, emotion to give, donate. So this is the uh, habitual impact of the mind in the positive side. And then certain weather conditions, lodgings and food are also conducive to wholesome acts. That's why uh, uh, when we are in, under certain weather conditions, our mind becomes more serene. This is very helpful for meditation and certain lodgings, certain our, uh, uh, there are places where we live and also some food. So in certain medicines, when we take certain medicines, our bad emotions can arise. At the same time, there are some food and medicine which controls our emotions and makes our mind calmer. So some teachers know which uh, certain medicines which are conducive to samadhi for concentration, which are helpful to grow the wisdom. So this is what uh, also, uh, they are also supportive for certain uh, wholesome chittas. Then conditions for akusala chittas are opposite to that of akusala chittas. Associating bad friends, bad friends means who encourage to do bad things. Then making efforts in involving unwholesome acts, listening to the false doctrine. False doctrine means doctrines which encourage us to do bad things. Then living in religious regions unconducive to wholesome acts, unwise attention or unwise attention and wise attention. Uh, wise attention is necessary for the kusala. It is the it is it happens and in these chittas, these two chittas, unwise and wise attention. I'll be discussing them in the Kamma chapter. Right? It's a, it's a very uh, uh, detailed explanation has to be given. Then previous arisen unwholesome consciousness which support the latter consciousness. It means if we have developed uh, negative habits, this also will affect us to do bad things again and again. Then certain weather conditions, lodgings and food which are conducive to unwholesomeness. Then we come to conditions for the Vipaka. So, uh, basic uh, condition for Vipaka is the past Kamma Kusala or Kusala Act because, because of that the uh, Vipaka Chitta arises. Then we have four types of conditions. We call it uh, Gati, Gati Sampati and Gati Vipati. Gati Sampati and Gati Vipati means according to the Buddhist teachings, a being has a done abundant of Kammas throughout the Sansara in the past lives. So, there, so these Kammas uh, forces of these, we are with these forces of kammas. Even though people have done many kammas, it doesn't mean they can get the opportunity to reveal their, all their results. It, it also needs certain conditions. One condition is the life into which we are born. So there are certain blissful and uh, woeful lives uh, explained by the Buddha. So according to his teachings, when we are born in good, wolf, good blissful abodes, our past wholesome kammas get the opportunity to yield our results. That's why we normally say if you are born in a celestial abode, you will not experience any type of a suffering. And always the kusala kammas gets the opportunity to give results. At the same way, if you are born in a woeful realm like animal realm or a goat, realm of a ghost, at that time the unwholesome kammas get the opportunity to give results. So the kusala and akusala kammas get the opportunity based on the realm we are born. So it doesn't mean that, for example, beings who are born in the animal realm also get the opportunity of their past kusala kammas, but the animal realm, the life of an animal is directly supporting for the akusala. Life of a celestial being is directly supporting for the kusala to give results. 
the animal life is directly supporting his past akusalas to give results. So it's like when it comes to the good side, all the good kammas will get the opportunity to give results. When it comes to the bad side, bad kammas will get the opportunity to give results. It's a very uh, 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 nice phenomenon explained in the tradition. It's like a, a simile is given in the commentaries. Uh, one person, he goes to the, uh, he goes to the, uh, he is given a position by the king and he's respected by the king, he's trusted by the king. So he goes to a rural area and he's given a very high position. So what he does is, using his power, by, power given by the king, he uh, uh, plunders the village, means he takes the money as he likes, he, he torments the people, he lives like a lord and he doesn't care about others. So what happened? People also keep silent and they don't uh, complain this to the king because he, they know if this complaint goes wrong, I will be the person who will be punished in the end. So they keep on, keep silent. Then what happened? But this person makes a mistake. He do the same thing to another leader like him. So at that level, he will not keep silent. He just, he goes and complains to the king because they are in a similar position. Then the king got the information, king trusted the information, he brings the person and put in the prison. Then what happened, people find, now this is an opportunity for us to complain because he is now under, his power is being reduced, he is now under difficult state. So people go and start to complain, oh he did this and this and this, all the complaints start to come like a water flow, the dam is broken. So a king get more and more information, he got really angry and he just punished him severely and kills him. So likewise, a person given the opportunity and the power by the uh, uh, vested the power, uh, uh, get the power vested by the, by the king and he goes to a rural area and keeps on living. So it's like living here, being born in a blissful abode. At that time, he's experiencing the good, good kammas that he has done. The past Akusala Kammas gets subdued during that time. It's like even he does bad acts, the people will keep their silence. They are afraid to complain. So then somehow he does bad acts and by misfortune or because of his bad acts in a, next, in a different life he is born in a woeful realm. It's like he does a bad thing to a person with a similar position and his com complaint goes to the king and king takes him out of the position and puts him in the prison. At that time what happens? All the people came and complained. It's like the, all the akusalas he has done in the past life which was suppressed because of his good life gets the opportunity to give the results. So all people came and complained the king and he got really severely punished by the king. So likewise, when the Akusala Kammas get the opportunity, because we are born, when the person is born in a woeful realm, Akusala Kammas get the opportunity and he is severely, he gets the results of this past Kamma. So this is how it is explained the Gati Sampati and Vipati. In the same way, Upadhi Sampati Vipati is the pleasant physical appearance, like attractive physical appearance, beautifulness or handsomeness. So when a person has such an attractive physical attribute, physical attribute, past Akusala Kammas doesn't get the opportunity to give results and past Kusala Kammas gets more opportunity to give results. In the same way, if a person has an unpleasant uh, physical attributes, this is the opportunity for the Akusalas to get results and the Akusalas to get subdued. Right? I'll be discussing them in the Kamma chapter in detail about these four points. Then we come to Kala Sampati Vipati. The proper conducive supportive eras where the garments are nice, the weather conditions are nice and then the other eras. So in good eras, Kusala Kammas get the opportunity to give results, Akusala Kammas get subdued. At the same time, uh, in the uh, bad eras, Akusalas get the opportunity to give results and Kusalas get subdued. The last one is Payoga Sampati and Vipati which is in our control. If someone lives, makes a good conduct, at that time, past Kusala Kammas, his past Kammas get the opportunity to give results and the Akusalas get down. At the same time, if he leaves a bad conduct, it happens otherwise. Then the conditions for the Kiriya Chittas, these are like, uh, these Kiriya Chittas are, for example, Bhavanga Chitta is a uh, reason for this particular Kiriya to happen. So the uh, Chitta, which is the uh, Panchadwara Arjuna Chitta, uh, for the Panchadwara Chitta. For the Manodwara Arjuna Chitta, the immediately previous Chitta is a cause. So likewise, there is a list of causes. I'm not going to read about, read that. Conditions for the Kiriya Chittas to happen. 
Then we come to another distribution of chittas based on the bhumi, based on the bhumi, the realm. Bhumi Veda or realm. So Bhumi Veda are realm. Chittas are distributed based on the realm. It's not basically based on where they are appear. Because they, all the chittas, most of the chittas can appear in different different realms. We know there are 31 realms. So the, the distribution of chittas in terms of realm, realms with the physical realms, according to the tradition, is not in a in a in a uh, organized manner. So normally this, this distribution based on the realm is basically based on the craving. Craving means the attachment of our mind, how they get attached to certain types of chittas. So there are basically three types of attachments. So if you go to the paragraph number 4.21, 4.21, consciousness is again classified based on the craving which can cognize them. So craving is related to the bhumi, that's the thing. Craving is threefold as Rupa Tanha. Craving for Rupa Jana. Rupa Jana means material. Jana which has a material object. They are sign Nimitta and lives of Brahmas with corporeity. Who has the Rupa. The Brahma is higher than Devas. Then Arupa Raga. Arupa Tanha actually. Please correct it. Arupa Tanha. Not Raga. Arupa Tanha. Craving for Rupa Janas. They are object and lives of Brahmas without corporeity. Then Kama Tanha, so we have two types of Tanha, Rupa Tanha and Arupa Tanha. All the Tanha other than Kama Tanha are categorized as, uh, all the Tanhas other than Rupa Tanha and Arupa Tanha are categorized as Kama Tanha. This is the threefold classification of Tanha. So there comes, if a Chitta is an object for Kama Tanha, if a Chitta is an object for Kama Tanha, that Chitta is considered as a Kama Vachara. If any chitta is an object for rupa tanha, that chitta is considered as rupa tanha. If any object, a chitta is object for arupa tanha, that chitta is considered as aru, arupa vachara. But uh, Venerable, uh, in the, the Dhammasangani commentary, Venerable Buddha Gosa has given a completely different uh, explanation on this kama, rupa and arupa vachara distribution of the chittas. So this is followed by, uh, by what is given in the Dhammasangani itself and explained by uh, the Mulatika and the Venerable Lady Sayadu both. So this is very uh, uh, logical and it's, it makes lots of sense based on the Abhidhamma analysis. So the thing is, if a consciousness is an object or attached by a certain Kama Tanha, Kama Tanha means we, we have to understand what is Kama. Kama, Kama world means there are 11 worlds. Like uh, according to the Buddhist cosmology, human realm is the one human. Then we have four woeful realms. Woeful realms, animals and ghosts are, or some ghosts are included here. Then we have six celestial realms. We call it deities, deva. So these are the eleven karma bhumi. Six, four, ten, plus one. So the tanha which basically associate, arise, uh, attached to these lives and things which are related to them are called Kama Tanha. We call Kama Tanha. So this, if such a, such a uh, attachment cognizes a certain object, certain chitta, that chitta is called Kama Vachara. That's just, it's a definition given. Then we come into Rupa, Rupa world. Rupa world is there are 16, Brahma realms with Rupa. So 16 realms. So Tanha which attach to things. Things means uh, realities which are uh, which pertain to these realms are called Kama uh, Rupa Tanha. They are called Rupa Tanha. Then we have another four types of uh, realms. Arupa Brahmas with Brahma realm without corporeity, without Rupa. They don't have a form. Their mind exists. So the attachment pertaining to this world, related to this world, 
Basically, the realities pertain to this world, the Arupa, the Janas, and all are called Arupa Tanha. So, if a Tanha is having a uh, cognizing any Chitta, if, if this Arupa Tanha attached to any Chitta, that Chitta is called Arupa Vachara. If Rupa Tanha attached to a certain Chitta, that Chitta is called Rupa Vachara. The remaining uh, defilements, if they attach to a certain Chitta, the remaining attachment, then we call a Kama Vachara Chitta. So this is the definition given on this. So then, based on this definition, we have 89 types of chittas. So one other point I want to say is, chitta in, in its intrinsic nature is just cognizing the object. The last week also this we discussed, there are two levels of cognition. Cogni collective cognition and basic cognition. Collective cognition which is effective, what we experience is not just the cognition done by the chitta itself. It's a collective cognition done by the mental states and the chitta together. So that is what actually really makes the effective uh, if, uh, effects in our life. The cognition done by the chitta is a very basic level. It gets elevated by when, when it is connected with certain mentalities. So normally chitta, all the chittas has this basic attribute of knowing a, knowing a, knowing an object, knowing an object. So, but based on uh, their, their classification of bhumi, classification of jati, and next lecture, and the next lecture we are going to discover classification of functions and classifications of the sankhara. Based on these reasons, we can categorize these the same chitta, the one chitta, into 89 types. So, 89 types of classification is not, a, not the uh, final type of classification. We can make it 121, sometimes more than that. For, uh, for example, for 500 plus, these uh, different, different classifications we can have. So, this 89 and 121 classification is for the basic purpose of studying the chitta. If we just say the chitta is a basic kind of a, 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 cognitive, a, a mental action of cognizing, it's difficult to study about the chitta in detail because the Buddha's main focus was given at the mental sphere, not in the physical sphere. So he dis divided the chitta, analyzed the chitta and mentalities in a very uh, exhaustive level. So then he explained uh, the teaching, gave the teaching so the people, the beings, listeners can focus on their mentalities and develop good qualities and abandon bad qualities. So therefore chitta has to be analyzed in order to study easily. That's why we get a list of chittas. Otherwise this list of 89 it doesn't, it doesn't mean that there are 89 chittas and it cannot be, it is the only classification and so forth. No, this classification of chittas is what we find in this, when we study the Abhidhamma, this is one kind of a way we can classify the chittas. If you go into Abhidhamma Pitaka, the classification is more exhaustive. It's like uh, you find more than 89 chittas according to the Abhidhamma, Abhidhamma doctrine. So therefore, what we have to understand is, Chitta is basically the an action of cognition and it is connected with certain uh, mental states. So its uh, level of cognition increases and it has some other criterion to divide it into certain types that we discussed and it has various types of functioning. It has various types of uh, different types of uh, uh, influence by our previous acts, sankhara. So therefore, the chitta we find we find different attributes of different uh, the chitta. So therefore, we divide into 89, 121, or other further classifications, right? So then, if our student has studied abhidhamma, he can find these chittas. It's not in the list as you find in the abhidhamma the sangaha. It is in a uh, little bit different list. If you go to the Kama Avachara group, you will find the chittas. For example, page number 17, you can see that it's listed is 12 Akusala chittas. Then we come to 7 Akusala Vipaka chittas, 8 Kusala chittas, 8 Ahetuka Vipaka, Kusala Vipaka, 8 Sahetuka Kusala Vipaka, 3 Ahetuka Kiriya, and 8 Sahetuka Kiriya. So I gave it in a different order for the students to understand it more easily. Right, more easy because if you go into the Abhidhamma Sangaha, that order is also introduced by, uh, by Abhidhamma uh, uh, Anuddha Charya based on a different. This is not the order you find in Abhidhamma, so the order can be changed because I, I changed it for the easiness of the students to follow. So, then uh, the, if you go to the uh, paragraph number next page 4.26, 4.26. 
We mentioned that the chitta are divided into bhumi, well, based on the tanha which get attached to them. Tanha which attached to them, attached to them. So then there are certain chittas which are cannot be attached by any sort of tanha. That is beyond the range of tanha. So these chittas we call the supra mundane chitta. These are the attainments, goal of a Buddhist to attain. So normally all the chittas that we have, uh, whether it's defiled or undefiled, that is the object of our craving. That's why a spiritual progress can also be craved by a person. We can, we can be happy, proud about our own success. So, but there are certain chittas which are beyond the range of defilements. They cannot be cognized by any sort of attachment. So these chittas are called aparyapana chitta. So aparyapana chitta means which are not designated based on the craving. So the first three types of chittas, kama vachara, rupa vachara, arupa vachara, are based, categorized based on the craving, the, uh, based on the craving which get attached to them. And the fourth type of chitta is the chitta which are not attached by, cannot be attached by any craving, so we call it aparyapana chitta. So then these aparyapana chitta are beyond the craving, and then what happens, these aparyapana chittas are twofold. Some chittas, they eradicate the kilesa. They eradicate the kilesa. So we call them magga chittas. Magga chittas, they eradicate the kilesas. At that time, they are going beyond the sansara. Kilesas are the reason for the continuation of sansara. If any chitta eradicates these kilesas, that chitta is causing us to go beyond. Go beyond means we are overcoming the existence overcoming the existence. We will explain this point when we come to the lectures about Nibbana. What is this overcoming? How it is overcome according to the Buddhist literature? So just at the moment, please keep in mind, these Magachittas eradicate the causes of our samsari continuation. So we call these chittis are overcoming in a present continuous tense I am using, overcoming the defilements. Then the next type of chitta is Palachittas. When we have eradicated the kilesas, then there appears another result of our practice. This chitta or pala chitta, we call it, it has already overcome. Overcome means these chittas arise after the defilements are eradicated. When the defilements are eradicated, the chitta arises, it's called pala chitta. This has already overcome the samsaric existence. So these are the uh, aparyapana chittas become twofold, so we call them lokuttara chitta. So lokuttara chitta. So aparyapana chitta, because they overcome the samsaric existence, the world, world means the existence, not the, we are not talking about the physical world here. World here means basically our own life, because if you go to the Rohita Sutta, Buddha mentions, you cannot find the end of the world by going into the space. You have to understand it within this life. So overcoming the world, chitta which overcome, uh, overcoming the world, which has overcome the world. So we call them Lokuttara chitta. Then there are another uh, three types of categorization. Uh, 4.27, we go into, uh, yeah, 4.27. Actually, sorry, Apriyapana chittas are found in the previous page. 4.25 is Apriyapana, 4.26 is Lokuttara. They are the same, Apriyapana and Lokuttara are the same. Oh, sorry for that. Then the, uh, uh, the first three types of chitta, Kama, Rupa and Arupa Vachara chittas are called Lokya chittas. I'll just read it. Uh, because, they, because they are subject to passing away, they pass away. Even Lokutra chitta pass away. But at the same time, they are falsely considered by ordinary beings as permanent, pressurable and self. So Lokutra chittas are not subject to, object to be considered as pleasurable self in wrong consideration because they are attained by the noble beings. Noble beings will never have a wrong idea about self to these, these kind of chittas. So therefore, the lower three types of chittas are considered Lokya because of two reasons, because they pass away and also they are wrongly considered. Lokutra chittas do pass away. Because they are not wrongly considered, we don't call them Lokya. Lokutra chittas do pass away, they are subject to vanishing, but since they are not subject, object to be considered wrongly, we don't call them Lokya. Then another categorization is Mahagata. Mahagata chitta means among the three types of chittas, Kama, Rupa, Arupa chittas, Rupa, Arupa chittas have attained special attributes, we call it Mahagata. Because they give great results, they exist for a long time in the Brahma realms, and they suppress the kilesas in a very strong level 
at the same time they suppressed uh, certain mental attributes like vitakka vichara and so forth which are cannot be done by kama vachana chitta because of their great functioning great resulting nature we call them mahagata mahagata means having attained the greatness mahagata means the chittas which have attained the greatness which have attained the greatness then the final classification explanation is appana chitta appana means actually is a name for vitakka vitakka is necessary because it, vita is means called appana because it goes into the object it plunges into the object it takes the object very 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 strongly so uh, because uh, it takes the uh, object very strongly it goes into the object and it also sometimes appears as plunging plunging into the object so the chittas which are developed based on this vitakka can also be called appana chittas when the uh, rupa and arupa chittas and also lokuttara chitta supramandin chitta they have very strong concentration this concentration is basically developed uh, mainly the assist with the assistance of vitakka so they are called appana chitta so these are the classification so i'll conclude the lecture i took some time so uh, today we this uh, in this lecture we discussed about the classification of chitta two types of classifications based on types and based on the realm based on the type was they have a few criterion based on because of the latent defilements because of the kama and because of certain functions chitta became four four less kusala akusala vipaka and kriya and then based on the uh, craving which attached to them these chittas chitta became three four four kama rupa arupa and the chittas which are beyond the craving range of craving are called apriya panna and then based on these three classification we also had lokiya chittas lokuttara chittas mahagata chitta and appana chitta so these are the points that i want discuss so next lecture i'll be discussing about the distribution of chittas based on kicca and also based on sankhara yeah if you have any question yes break bracket yeah, yeah. 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 i can't hear the word bracket break break ah break okay yeah. this this chitta yeah. what did you say and if it be a break what in chitta condition for the next one ah okay so this break it means this normally we call is a vipaka chitta I mentioned that always we have a basic type of a chitta called bhavanga, and uh, I think I will be explaining detail in the next lecture about this. So, is it okay if I explain in the next lecture? Because I am taking a long time to explain about this bhavanga chitta, which is also why it arises in the sleeping levels, why we are in sleep, and also which arises in between. Right? I will explain it in that. Okay. So, no questions. So, we will start in another fifteen minutes. Thank <laughs> you.